Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, November 28, 2014. Now you are watching a pre-recorded edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. We're all enjoying our families as we hope you are as well. Now tonight we're going to be bringing you some in-depth coverage talking about the pipeline to prison. Obviously they do this via the war on drugs as well they've got the mandatory minimums. But if you want to know about the prison industrial complex, it's a booming business. And how do they keep these private prisons profitable? Well, they have to have a steady flow of new inmates. And if you want to talk about how minorities are disproportionately imprisoned, well, how does that happen? Well, tonight we'll also show you how you minorities are directly targeted via hip hop and it's prison for profit image that they promote this gangster lifestyle. There's a reason for that. There's a, there's a reason why they are promoting this, priming the youth for a lifetime in prison. Now, first up, we're going to air a special report from the real Rick Ross. He was here in studio while he was promoting his new book. He's on a tour of self-redemption, and he has a very powerful message. <laughs> I'm the real Rick Ross. Today, there's a new epidemic, smokable cocaine, otherwise known as crack. I, I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. The CIA used him as a pawn to sell drugs to help fund the secret war in Nicaragua. Illegal cocaine is coming into our country at alarming levels. He was a 1980s drug lord who became a multi-millionaire urban legend in Los Angeles. A rap star even stole his name and parlayed it into a music career. Huh. I'm your neighborhood drug dealer. Drug dealer. It's your neighborhood drug dealer. Hey, you see Rick Ross in there? Rick Ross. The real, the real Rick Ross. Rick Ross. Yeah. To William Roberts, a.k.a. Rick Ross, who's using my name, I'm inviting you in to come with me. Let's fight this culture. Let's fight this penitentiary culture that hip hop's been spreading. Let's make a difference. Men, you need to come together and you need to tell them that you didn't make your money selling drugs. And making music is how you became famous. See, it's nothing wrong with making music. It's like it's nothing wrong with being a correctional officer, if that's what you did. But so many of our friends who look up to you and look up to me are out on the streets thinking that they can go out and sell drugs and parlay that into a record career. I don't know if you know that they're not gonna make it, but I know that they're gonna wind up in prison with prison sentences three and four times what they should be because this war on drugs is no joke. I have 10 or 11 friends still in prison right now with life sentences, including one that you even you know, Big Meech. I know how much you respect me and care about me. Otherwise, you wouldn't have took my name. Take a chance with me now. Let's make a difference. And even if William Roberts, AKA Rick Ross, don't decide to come with me and join hands, then the rest of the artists out there, let's just come together. Professor Griff, KRS-One, and so forth. Let's join hands. Let's change this thug culture. Let's change this hip hop to prison pipeline. Let's make it happen right now today. Let's do it. And not just you, the whole hip hop community. I'm asking all of you. Let's all of us come together. Let's change these laws right now and end this senseless war on drugs. A lot of times we go through life and uh, we start to believe that the things that we are experiencing in our life and the things that we see in our communities are the only way it is. Like, this is the way it is. This is the way it's supposed to be. And when you start to think like that, you can get trapped in a box. Hip hop has taken over the world. If we can take hip hop back, we can change the whole planet. We can bring real peace and no more war. Let's be pioneers. Let's be talked about forever for how we change the way society thinks 
about each other. It don't have to always be a war on drugs. If we can educate ourselves to where our kids and our, our, our brothers and our sisters and our mothers and our fathers look at drugs the way we look at rat poison, you know, we just don't go around using rat poison and other uh, chemicals that's, that's harmful to our body. If we teach our people how to not use drugs the same way, then eventually we don't have to worry about them using drugs. Now you may never have heard of some of these stars, but your kids have. They're heroes to a whole new generation. Now they take these guys and these guys say, well, I got to the position that I'm in right now today by selling drugs. So the message that it tells our kids is that if you go out, you sell drugs, then you can become a great rock star like myself and never go to prison. And I think that that's a false message to be given people who feel hopeless. I'm letting you know right now that the establishment is using hip hop to prime these kids for a life that's gonna send them to prison, just like they did with me. See, when I was coming up, that was Superfly, Tequila Sunrise, Scarface, all these movies to make you think that you could start with nothing and then you could have the whole world at the palm of your hand. Only that there was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It was a set of handcuffs and shackles. And you want to know why the CIA symbol is behind me? Because they were the guys behind me when I was selling drugs. And now they're behind hip hop and rock and roll. This prison hip hop connection, they're behind that too. If it was if it was good for them to sell drugs, then it, it should have been good for me to sell drugs. The money from the drugs went to buy guns for the country. Even if you don't read my book, warn your kids. Let them know. But I advise you that this book is worth reading. Definitely for your kids. Even if you don't read it, get it for your kids. Get it for your loved ones. Let them see what the drug culture is all about. It's not manufactured like the stuff you see on TV and you hear in music. This is real life. It's your life, your loved one's life. Let's make a difference. You know where to find me, Freeway Ricky, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, freewayrick.com. Hit me up. You know I'm out here. Yeah, it's very important that I redeem myself for the wrongs that I've done. And I feel that the way that I can redeem myself the best is by helping others not fall in the same footsteps that I fell in, because I believe that it's a trap. It's a trap to catch you. Yeah, just because you're doing bad and you're looking for a way to make an income, there's people that will take your freedom forever and ever. Don't make the same mistake I made. Don't get caught up. It's time for us to wake up and face it. Get the truth, and you're done. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Self-proclaimed hood billionaire Rick Ross dropped his seventh studio album today. I'm your neighborhood drug dealer.
Now, the Rick Ross of 2014 is a little bit more known for his recent weight loss and fondness for pears, yet he still feels that he's got to keep up this image of being the friendly neighborhood drug dealer. Now, why is this? Does he really think that his fans won't appreciate an album about mm, the miracles of a good juice cleanse? I eat pears now and shit like that. Shout out to all the pear. Of course not. And that is the hip-hop psyop. How else will the establishment prime the youth for a life that leads to prison without selling them on the gangster lifestyle? The rapper Rick Ross is nothing but a soldier for the New World Order. He is priming the youth for a life in prison, and he's laughing all the way to the bank. Here is what the real Rick Ross has to say to this name-jacking rapper. To William Roberts, a.k.a. Rick Ross, who's using my name, I'm inviting you in to come with me. Let's fight this culture. Let's fight this penitentiary culture that hip-hop's been spreading. Let's make a difference. For so many of our friends who look up to you and look up to me are out on the streets thinking that they can go out and sell drugs and parlay that into a record career. I don't know if you know that they're not going to make it, but I know that they're going to wind up in prison with prison sentences three and four times what they should be because this war on drugs is no joke. And I think that that's a false message to be given people to who feel hopeless. And notice, they don't indict the people that are fake and claim all that. No, no, they want them out there like a lantern fish has that light to get the little fish to swim over so they can eat them. Have you ever thought to yourself, why is this person so popular? Their music sucks. Well, we all know that the music industry is a machine, a giant machine. 90% of what Americans read, watch, and listen to is controlled by just six media corporations. Those media companies own and control all of the channels through which an artist becomes popular. They own the networks, the radio stations, the award shows, the movie studios, the magazines, the cable channels. Without any regard to their actual talent, a person can be launched into superstardom overnight. And here's another shocking truth. The people who own all of the media are the same people who own all of the private prisons. The prison industrial complex is a booming industry. And just like any industry that needs a constant supply of raw materials to keep up with demand, prisons need prisoners. RapRehab.com has done some really great legwork exposing the facts about hip hop and prison for profit. According to public analysis from Bloomberg, the largest holder in Corrections Corporation of America is Vanguard Group, Inc. Vanguard is the third largest holder in both Viacom and Time Warner. Vanguard is also the third largest holder in the GEO Group, whose correctional, detention, and community reentry services boast 101 facilities, approximately 73,000 beds, and 18,000 employees. Now, the number one holder of both Viacom and Time Warner is a company called BlackRock. BlackRock is the second largest holder in Corrections Corporations of America, second only to Vanguard, and the sixth largest holder in the GEO Group. Not so fast, Leanne. A reduction in crime would harm the bottom line. The prison industrial complex, of which I am a proud investor, depends on incarceration to make profits. We gotta keep all drugs illegal, make our prison sentences longer, and promote more gangster rap. And I will have more money in my bags. <laughs> so let me say that again. The people who own the media are also the same exact people who own the private prisons. Now these people are using hip hop to generate a constant stream of new inmates to keep business booming. These are the real hood billionaires. Now, prior to the 1980s, private prisons did not exist in the U.S., but thanks to the war on drugs as implemented by the Reagan administration, incarceration rates skyrocketed. The demand for more prison space resulted in privatization and the for-profit prison industry. In 2012, the biggest name in the private prison industry offered to buy up the prisons in 48 states. One curious stipulation, states would have to guarantee a sufficient inmate population 
to maintain a minimum 90% occupancy rate over the term of the contract. Oh, but how could states possibly guarantee a minimum 90% occupancy rate? Well, enforcing mandatory minimums was one great start, but then there's the Kids for Cash scandal in which two judges in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania were receiving judicial kickbacks for sending youths convicted of minor crimes to a privatized for-profit juvenile facility. So legislation that's favorable to the industry is one great way to keep incarceration rates up, but so is the glamorization of the gangster lifestyle. It's absolutely essential as a continued advertisement for imprisonment. Now you see many artists with an empowering message just fall off and you're actually brainwashed to believe that this music is somehow inferior because it's not thug life. The music that gets pushed is that which breaks down the community and guarantees a 90% prison occupancy rate. And that is not my opinion, that is a pipeline to prison fact. It is no coincidence that the very same people who are disproportionately incarcerated are being inundated on a daily basis with this message that jail is just an ordinary and even expected fact of life. Yeah, it's very important that I redeem myself for the wrongs that I've done. And I feel that the way that I can redeem myself the best is by helping others not fall in the same footsteps that I fell in. Because I believe that it's a trap. It's a trap to catch you. Yeah. Just because you're doing bad and you're looking for a way to make an income, there's people that will take your freedom forever and ever. Don't make the same mistake I made. Don't get caught up. It's time for us to wake up and face it. Get the truth, and you're done. The globalists have controlled the mainstream media for a long time, but now they're expanding, making the weaponization even more vicious and deceptive. All the major networks are state-run. We are partnering this year with the NFL. The NFL has become a political weapon against the Second Amendment and pushes Obamacare. MSNBC tells us that our children belong to the state. We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. It is more important than ever to realize Realize that we are not the alternative media. We are the true media. The establishment dinosaur press is dying. We are in an information war, and we are losing that war. Join us at InfoWarsNews.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Members can share their memberships with up to 11 people. By subscribing, you will literally be buying war bonds in the info war to expand our operation in the face of the tyrants. Join us at PrisonPlanet.tv. Freeway Rick Ross, he was sentenced to life in prison after being convicted of trying to purchase more than 100 kilograms of cocaine from a federal agent. Ross became the subject of a controversy later that year when a series of articles by journalist Gary Webb and the San Jose Mercury brought to light a connection between one of Ross's cocaine sources and the CIA as part of the Iran-Contra scandal. His sentencing was later reduced to less than 20 years and released in September 2009. He's finally off the, the uh, probation, the harassment, all of it. Back when this all first came out, people didn't believe the CIA was bringing drugs in. I didn't believe it. It wasn't until uh, the CIA themselves <laughs> told me that they were involved. I was born here in, in, in Texas, Tyler. Uh, uh, my mom uh, decided that she wanted to try uh, Los Angeles, give us an opportunity to have more than what she had. She was a, a maid here in Tyler, so uh, she moved to L.A. I moved in during the Watts riot. So I go to school and, um, you know, trying to be like any other normal kid, you know, want to be a police officer, a firefighter, or airplane pilot. Um, started playing tennis in high school, you know, did pretty good, made all city, uh, was offered scholarships, but I couldn't read or write. So I found myself back in the streets in South Central Los Angeles. Couldn't get a job, you know, even though I, I was a very hard worker. Any, any number of things, just anything that I could do to, uh, to start making a living, I was willing to do it. Before I started selling cocaine, you know, they started coming out with movies like Superfly and, and almost like priming you up for this lifestyle that, that, that you're about to get into. 
Um, so when my friend comes and shows me cocaine, I'm interested. Rock and roll, the drug culture, the CIA delivered the first suitcases of LSD. Uh, white kids weren't smoking marijuana. They delivered it. I mean, it's incredible. They primed the whole deal. They get your mind ready so that when you, when you get the opportunity that you're interested in. It's called predictive programming. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's just what you're saying is absolutely right. So when my friend comes and he shows me this stuff, never seen it before. It was yellowish, yellowish white. And I'm like, well, I thought cocaine was supposed to be white. He's like, no, man, this is it. So he introduces it to me. He gives me a little bit, like $50 worth. He said, go and see what you can do with it. So I go around the neighborhood, and I'm asking everybody. Nobody knows what it is. I mean, I'm going all over South Central L.A. Finally, I run into a guy. He was a pimp, and he says, let me see it. And he takes it, and he cooks it up, and he says, oh, yeah, it's pretty good stuff. And that's how I got started selling cocaine. And it went from there to... This one person would buy from me, and then another one would come, and he would introduce me to somebody else until up, you know, some days I'm making $3 million a day. So you got in on the ground floor of it. Yeah, absolutely, totally ground. So, so I desperately want to do something now. I, I need to make some money somewhere. So when this opportunity came, you know, I thought that it was a, a blessing from God. You know, I started off just helping Mike, who was my friend. You know, uh, I'd make the money for him, give him all the money, and pretty soon I know the business. In my community, nobody, nobody knew what cocaine was. Yeah, it was a rich white guy drug. When I started selling cocaine, that's how I felt about cocaine, that it was another one of those things that they said, no, this is for white people and you guys can't have it. So I felt like I was bringing cocaine to my community to give us something. But the CIA said, oh, you blacks want it? We're going to make something special for you. Here's how you make crack. Yeah, absolutely. Tell the story. Did you ever use? Why were you so successful? I did start using uh, for a short time. You know, I, I got up to a point to where... Uh, I probably had about eight or nine thousand dollars. I thought I was rich. <laughs> so you know, when you're rich, you start experimenting. You know, with 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 the drugs. And I looked up; all my money was gone. So I immediately quit using. You know, I went back and regroup, regrouped. You know, I learned that from tennis. When you're doing something wrong, uh, you go back and you figure out what you're doing wrong. So I figured out that I couldn't use anymore. So I stopped using, and I went on to get rich. I started seeing the effects that cocaine was having in, inside of my community, and it wasn't the effects that I initially thought that it was going to have. You know, I started seeing people pushing baskets. I started seeing women walking the streets and uh, women doing anything to get high. And I started to rethink my, my position. I threw my hands up. I said, you know what? I'm through with the cocaine business. I got enough money. I got more money now than I ever thought that I would have in my life. I got businesses. So I walked away. Government came back and indicted me for the things that I'd already done. Went to prison. Uh, did five years in prison. Immediately after I got out, they had Danilo Blandon started to call me. And his goal was to get me back inside of drugs, but I didn't want to go back. I, I was trying to go straight. Uh, he hounded me for like six months to introduce him to one of my friends. Uh, once I made the introduction, my friend handed him a, a, a bag of money. The cops swooped in, arrested all of us, and they got me for brokering the deal, for, for making the introduction, saying that I knew that they were going to be doing a drug deal, and for that reason that I aided and abetted the crime. Um, for that, doing that crime, they gave me a life sentence. While I was sitting in jail doing, uh, doing this life sentence, fighting my case, uh, I was um, approached by a reporter, Gary Webb. Well, Gary came down and he saw me. He started talking about that, that I was in something bigger than, you know, what I thought I was. But, you know, also, too, Alex, uh, that there were some cops on my case. They called themselves the Freeway uh, Task Force. And those cops were robbing and stealing. And, and, you know, they let the dog bite me while I was handcuffed. Uh, they got indicted as well. They was taking the drugs from one person, planting them on another person, and selling them to this person, and just, you know, just a criminal enterprise. I mean, the whole the whole war on drugs is just like one big hoax of one person benefiting this one, another one benefiting that way. But at the end of the day, uh, guys like myself get caught in the middle. I believe that we're the ones who's paying the biggest price. Not necessarily myself, because I knew I was selling drugs, and I knew that I shouldn't have been selling drugs after a period of time. Once everything came out and I interviewed with the CIA, you know, the CIA came down to my jail cell. Webb talked about and you've, how he got threatened out in the hall, threatened to kill him and stuff. They didn't just threaten to kill his kids. I mean, the feds themselves that were there, not just the CIA, they were basically all in on it. It's the just... DA, I mean, they sandbagged us doing trial. The court has a, a, a thing where they call a, a pre-trial hearing where the informant is supposed to be come to like a little room. I couldn't be there, but my lawyer was supposed to be there and Gary was supposed to be there. Well, anyway, uh, Blandon comes to this hearing and when they get in the room and my lawyer wants to ask him some questions, 
And the guy said, everything that I got to say, I'm going to say during trial. So we, we don't know what this guy is going to say. All the information that Gary has, we don't have this information. And Gary's not giving it to us. He didn't give us this information at first. Because uh, Gary knew I had the relationship with LA Times. So uh, I felt that Gary was worried about me leaking his information to uh, Jesse Katz at LA Times. Because, you know, me and Jesse Katz still had a relationship where we talked once in a while. So Gary didn't give it to us. And he gets up from the trial table, and he goes and he talks to Blandon, and then he goes back and he asks Gary, because Gary's feeding him, like, little bits of pieces. And that was smart. That way, the L.A. Times, now admitted, run by the CIA, the editor CIA, trying to cover all this up. You didn't know that. He could only ask it while it was happening live, so he would get the intel, and they couldn't spin it. Yeah, you know, they tried to say <laughs> that I told Gary how to put it together. <laughs> you know they said that, right? Yes. That, that, oh, Rick Ross dreamed this all up and put this together and, and fed it to Gary and got Gary to buy into it. But I didn't know none of this. They, they gave me more credit than, <laughs> than I deserved. It baffles me that people don't know this. I'm like, the CIA admitted it. They got, they got a report. You can go to their website, and the report is on their website, and, and, and people don't know it. We're in court, and Gary's asking uh, uh, my lawyer this, and then the judge recognized what's going on, and she was like, well, why do you keep talking to this reporter? Why are you running back and forth to him in the courtroom? Uh, I want you to stand here and, and do this. We're not on a fishing exposition because, um, you know, Gary was asking about certain names, Enrique Ramudez, and then Blandon talks about, well, my boss goes on a fishing trip with George Bush, and when they come back, they say the ends justify the means. I'm still learning what's going on. So then eventually we finish trial. They, they give me the life sentence, and a uh, couple months later, Gary's story come out. Gary sends me a copy. I get a copy the day before it comes out. Uh, I call Gary on the phone, and then we start to talk, and he starts to tell me, you know, about the CIA being involved, about the Contras. Because, you know, I really didn't know what the Contras was. Definitely did not know that they were backed by the CIA and, and, and uh, Ronald Reagan and George Bush. Had no clue that they was backed by that. It's come out Ronald Reagan, not defending him. He didn't know it was George Herbert Walker Bush running all that as well, keeping it from him. So if the president didn't know, Rick, you can't blame me for not knowing. When it comes out, Gary runs it down to me. He starts to tell me, and I'm like, oh, this guy, Gary, he's out there. <laughs> A couple of days later, uh, the OIG is at my cell. The, the CIA is at my cell. Uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters is there. You had a chance once it came out that it had been going on to throw Gary Webb under the bus. You wouldn't do it. Oh no, no, I, I, um, I respect what Gary does, uh, what he did, and and even. Well, you're he, right. He, he's still alive. I mean, he's he's living on through his yeah through a story. Absolutely. You know, hey, it's the it's it's his spirit that, that that people have to respect. I mean, this guy stood up for justice. Yeah, he told me he was going to keep going. That uh, he was going to get to the bottom of it, and that he wasn't going to stop until. He was done with it. And of course, he was never discredited. That's why they had to kill him, because they tried to kill him in the media, but and then that didn't work, so they just killed him. Well, you know, the Internet saved the story. Once it hit that Internet, you know, it just started going from person yeah. to person to person to person. I, I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Government involvement sterilizing people would come out. It has. Government involvement shipping drugs in would come out. It has. It came out in the 60s. Symbols are powerful, and the globalists have hijacked the symbols of America. They've turned them into their own symbols. Well, we are restoring the idea of the true republic, not the counterfeit globalist empire, by promoting the icon George Washington and others. That's why we're rolling out on a 100% Made in America line of incredible pro-liberty apparel. We are repopularizing liberty. We are helping fellow Americans. Americans rediscover what made this country great. We are the spirit of 1776. We are 1776 worldwide. We are all brothers and sisters in arms in the animating contest of liberty in the long march towards humanity's ultimate destiny of freedom. Visit madein1776.com today and vote with your dollars to promote truly made in America high quality products and promote the ideals of liberty. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. 
You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. Members can share their passcodes with up to 11 other people, and your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. I would be a correctional officer if that's what you did. But so many of our friends who look up to you and look up to me are out on the streets thinking, that they can go out and sell drugs and parlay that into a record career. I don't know if you know that they're not gonna make it, but I know that they're gonna wind up in prison with prison sentences three and four times what they should be because this war on drugs is no joke. I have 10 or 11 friends still in prison right now with life sentences, including one that even you know, Big Meech. I know how much you respect me and care about me. Otherwise, you wouldn't have took my name. Take a chance with me now. Let's make a difference. And even if William Roberts, AKA Rick Ross, don't decide to come with me and join hands, then the rest of the artists out there, let's just come together. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, November 28, 2014. Now you are watching a pre-recorded edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. We're all enjoying our families as we hope you are as well. Now tonight we're going to be bringing you some in-depth coverage talking about the pipeline to prison. Obviously they do this via the war on drugs as well they've got the mandatory minimums. But if you want to know about the prison industrial complex, it's a booming business. And how do they keep these private prisons profitable? Well, they have to have a steady flow of new inmates. And if you want to talk about how minorities are disproportionately imprisoned. That the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. The CIA used him as a pawn to sell drugs to help fund the secret war in Nicaragua. Illegal cocaine is coming into our country at alarming levels. He was a 1980s drug lord who became a multi-millionaire urban legend in Los Angeles. A rap star even stole his name and parlayed it into a music career. Huh. I'm your neighborhood drug dealer. Drug dealer. It's your neighborhood drug dealer. Hey, you see Rick Ross in there? Rick Ross. The real, real Rick Ross. Ross. To William Roberts, AKA Rick Ross, who's using my name, I'm inviting you in to come with me. Let's fight this culture. Let's fight this penitentiary culture that hip hop's been spreading. Let's make a difference. Men, you need to come together and you need to tell them that you didn't make your money selling drugs. And making music is how you became famous. See, it's nothing wrong with making music. Just like it's nothing wrong. Professor Griff, KRS-One, and so forth. Let's join hands. Let's change this thug culture. Let's change this hip hop to prison pipeline. Let's make it happen right now today. Let's do it. And not just you, the whole hip hop community. I'm asking all of you.
Let's all of us come together. Let's change these laws right now and end this senseless war on drugs. A lot of times we go through life and uh, we start to believe that the things that we're experiencing in our life and the things that we see in our communities are the only way it is. Like, this is the way it is. This is the way it's supposed to be. And when you start to think like that, you can get trapped in a box. Hip hop has taken over the world. If we can take hip hop back, we can change the whole planet. Well, how does that happen? Well, tonight we'll also show you how you minorities are directly targeted via hip hop and it's prison for profit image that they promote this gangster lifestyle. There's a reason for that. There's a, there's a reason why they are promoting this, priming the youth for a lifetime in prison. Now, first up, we're gonna air a special report from the real Rick Ross. He was here in studio while he was promoting his new book. He's on a tour of self-redemption and he has a very powerful message. <laughs> I'm the real Rick Ross. Today, there's a new epidemic, smokable cocaine, otherwise known as crack. I, I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that